but if you are like me, I need a little list to kind of choose from to help me focus on choosing the best things. And those are going to be the things that are nutrient dense. I talk about this often. So you're in your eating window and you're struggling to figure out what are the best foods for you to eat. Often our temptation is to break our fast and dive into something that is super satisfying and often carb laden is my temptation. But if you are like me, I need a little list to kind of choose from to help me focus on choosing the best things. And those are going to be the things that are nutrient dense. I talk about this often and it's a little bit of a struggle sometimes to know just exactly what that does mean. So I'm going to go through a list here of nutrient dense foods that are great to focus on building your menu around and to look for when you're in the grocery store. The first item on my list is eggs. Eggs are just like nature's little multivitamin because it's filled with high quality protein good healthy fats, and it is very easy and convenient. You can choose farm-raised eggs, which is what we hope to be able to do on a daily basis, but sometimes our chickens are not as agreeable. But if you don't have your own chickens, it does not mean that you are not getting the benefit of such a healthy food as well. You definitely can buy the ones in the grocery store, and they are going to be just fine. We all like something sweet and berries are a great way to sort of fill that sweet tooth without being super high in sugars. Sticking to things like strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, these are going to be the healthiest because they contain antioxidants and like I said, not a high sugar content so they're not going to spike your blood sugar as much as bananas or some other fruits. While we're in the produce aisle, potatoes are a great option as well. They kind of get a bad rap because of the carbs, but they are also a great source of potassium, magnesium, iron, manganese, plus vitamins B and C. And there are so many different ways they can be prepared and combined with other healthy foods. And that also brings us to garlic. Garlic is something that can be added to so many of your foods to flavor them. Garlic is great for lowering your overall cholesterol, for bringing the good cholesterol up and the bad cholesterol down. Also, it's incredible for your immune system, though. You can never have too much garlic in anything in our house. So moving on to some proteins, Salmon is a great source of healthy omega-3 fatty acids, which is needed by every cell in your body. And it's also great for the correct functioning of your eyes, your brain, your heart, your circulation, and your immune system. Shellfish is another great nutrient-dense food, which includes oysters, clams, scallops, mussels, all of those are great. When you have the choice though, always opt for wild caught rather than farmed raised, but sometimes farmed raised is all we can find. So we're just going to do the best with what we've got. Okay, this next one is not going to thrill a lot of people. You've seen a lot about the sardine fast or the sardine challenge, but sardines surprisingly are extremely nutrient dense. These little fish have some of almost every nutrient that your body needs. And the crazy thing is that because they're so small, that when you consume them, you typically just consume the whole thing. And when that does happen, then you are consuming the organs and you're also consuming the bones. You are getting the maximum benefit from the entire fish all at once. If you've not heard of the sardine fasting challenge, it's something that a lot of people in the intermittent fasting community are talking about and trying and practicing regularly. I've done a couple of fasts myself. We've done a challenge in our community. And I also have a cheat sheet for a sardine fasting challenge if you would be interested. I'll put a link in the description. It just tells a little bit about what the challenge is about. It gives you some guidelines and some ideas for different ways to eat them and a bit of the rules for the challenge. It's something that I hope to make probably about a monthly challenge 
It's a great way to recover from maybe a bad week. Say you were on vacation and enjoyed a little bit too much indulging, then it's a great way to get back on track and feed your body with all those nutrients that you need. The next item on the list is liver. And this is one that I am personally trying for the first time in my house. I've never cooked chicken livers, but I did it today. And I was really surprised that um, it actually was a pretty good taste. I pretty much had to fight off the dogs because they definitely enjoyed the smell of it and were pawing at me to have a bite. I shared a little, but the majority of it I did have myself. I also had two chicken hearts at the same time. We just processed chickens recently, and in the past, I've not kept the chicken livers or the chicken hearts um, for human consumption. We've typically given it to our dogs. This time, I saved those, packaged them in small Ziploc bags so that I could bring them out a little bit at a time and to um, regularly have a little bit of organ meat with our regular diet. Um, I was pleasantly surprised and definitely am looking for interesting ways to make those in the future. It's also encouraging me to consider maybe beef liver or other organ meats. Liver is a great source of all the B vitamins, vitamin A, copper, iron, phosphorus, zinc, selenium, and obviously a high quality protein. The last item I'm going to have on my list today is one that we probably can all enjoy, and that is cocoa and dark chocolate. Who says we can't have a little bit of fun when we're trying to be healthy? So here, by focusing on chocolates where the cocoa content is 70 to 85%, you're gonna get a lot of really good benefits from the antioxidants, which is believed to help reduce blood pressure, high cholesterol, and heart disease. It's definitely a mood booster, and who doesn't need a little pick-me-up? Obviously, the consumption needs to be just a small amount, but a small amount packs a big punch. Just be careful about the sugar that you add to it. So there you have it, friends. There's a list of some really good nutrient-dense foods that maybe you can add into your diet. You maybe don't want to try everything all at once, but just introduce a little bit of the things that are good for you so that we can enjoy the benefits and aid ourselves in the intermittent fasting journey. Just try one at a time to get used to them. Knowing that you are maximizing your eating window is going to make your fasting window more productive. So that's it guys. That's all I have for you today. Until we meet on the next video, happy fasting. <music>